So John and today and I are talking about um, wrapping up the semester. And we originally talked about this at the start of semester or way back, I don't know, sometime, um, just sort of how we work really hard at the start of the semester to build community. We spent a lot of time thinking about um, getting to know our students, you know, you, we've talked about icebreakers and welcome letters and all these other things, but we really don't talk too much about parting from our class or leaving our leaving, <laughs> ending our class. Um, and for students, since we've spent so much time building a community, it can seem pretty abrupt, pretty anticlimactic. Um, so we wanted to talk today about how you can end your course on a note that's as strong as the one you began on. And, um, how you, a couple activities that combine academic relevance, emotional closure, and making connections outside of the classroom. So we also know and respect that it's week 15 and you just may not be able to, you know, incorporate or don't have the energy right now to incorporate some new fun activity and, and to get your students engaged. But there are a couple easy ways that um, you can do today, tomorrow to, to close out the semester and then also to, Think about incorporating for for next year. Um, Donna, did you want to share anything else on that? Yeah, I mean, I think there's some there's some big things you can do, and there's some small things. You want that kind of I look at it as a soft landing because the last three weeks of the semester are just can I get extra credit? Oh my gosh, I'm missing this. I got to study for the final. But having that kind of at the end, and for them to for the students and for yourself to look at what the journey you've all been on. And I know that sounds just so wordsmith, we all say that, but that whole process, instead of like Rachel said, hitting that hard stop, find that soft landing. So we're gonna go through a couple of uh, activities that may require a little bit more effort, um, but then we'll get to the easier ones. But these are sort of the activities that address that academic relevance with closure and, well, I guess, and connections beyond the classroom. Um, so the first one, that three, two, one exercise, I do something similar to this, but at the start of the semester, my courses go uh, in order. So I use something like this to figure out what I need to cover the next semester, but it's also great to do at the end of the semester. Um, have your students write three key concepts that they'll remember from your class or put it in discussion or, you know, you could do these in small discussions too, small group settings in person online. Um, two ways they can apply with uh, two ways they can apply what they've learned and one burning question they still have. So for me, I just do the most important thing, skill, tool they learned, and then one thing they still have a lot of questions on. So you could change this up to be uh, to meet your class needs. But it's a great way, uh, the next couple of exercises are a great way just to make sure what you've been wanting them to learn from your class is actually uh, getting through to them. The second one being um, a headline, write a headline. So have your students write uh, six to eight words to summarize what they'll remember most about the course. Um, so the, both of these, and you can start dropping your six to eight word teaching tree headline in the chat. Um, <laughs> but most of these, they're taking what we've learned in class, um, you can then review them with your class. If you know, you're in class or maybe a video or, um, you know, if they go from small group discussions and share outs. Um, so you can gauge what was learned, maybe what was missed, um, what captured students' attention. Um, it can help them review for the cumulative final, um, uh, whether it's in your discussion boards or, you know, in person. Um, Yes, a three, two, one in teaching tree would be good too. So I'm waiting for your six to eight word teaching tree headline in chat. Um, but anytime you come up with one, but Donna, go ahead. <laughs> so I do something similar, but because I teach child development and we cover so much theory and how humans develop, I have what I call the aha assignment. Basically, they get full credit if they just answer the question. And my question to them is, what was what was your aha moment when you learned something about a theory or peers or adolescents that you went, oh, I get it now. That's why teenagers do that. Or that's why four-year-olds react that way. So I get parents in the class. It's a GE class, so I get a lot of people. So it's just a chance for them to go, that explains something to me. 
Another um, goodbye I've done is I don't normally allow them to respond to announcements because I just, it's just so much, but I will post an announcement say, you know, I'll write them a letter. This is what I got out of the class. This is what you taught me. Thank you so much. I learned, you know, the whole thing because you learn something from each class and then I give them a chance to respond. I've also done a discussion, no points, they don't have to. I say goodbye and then I say, say, you know, say goodbye to a peer or everyone, whoever you touch, you know, whoever you talk to, you connected with, this is your chance to tell them what they meant to you. So those are just some other ways that I've done it. Um, the AHA is an assignment, but the others are just, if you want to. I think what Katie just put in the chat is great that I wanted to stress too that uh, one yeah. thing they'll take with them to their next class like that's when I do my one one three instead of the three two one assignment but you know I, I stress in the discussion like you do not have to pick a GIS tool it could just be something you learned about how you learn or studying or resiliency or problem solving like it could be anything so yeah a study strategy resource tip um, definitely like uh, great ideas and I am loving the uh, so far, I'm only seeing two newspaper headlines, but you're not being graded, so that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> this one, um, this next one, I thought of this morning. So sorry, Donna, this is terrible. <laughs> um, I remember seeing the the another way to check um, if your message was on track, and I'm pretty sure I saw Kelly Spoon post this on Twitter. But of course, uh, she did. <laughs> yeah, but then I but then I like Googled it and found it. So I was going to text her because I knew she wasn't going to be here. But I thought, no, I know how to use Google. Um, so, so anyway, but there's, a, there's this teacher that's done like submit memes. Uh, so you could do that to same idea as the three, two, one or the headline. If you want to be cool with the kids or TikTok video, I don't know any of the technologies that they're doing, like have them explain a concept in a one minute TikTok video or in a, in a meme, just something that, um, is a way I don't, I'm not a cool life. I don't know. Uh, something cool, <laughs> a way to make your class relevant. Um, you know, uh, so just, just, you know, anything you can think of, um, that, that would work, that would be fun. I think the idea behind these exercises too, like Donna's suggestions too, is there, they're, so, you know, building that community, like they can be fun. It can be fun to kind of remember the things you've learned, especially like the, and it's easier sometimes in when you're in person, but I know in my online classes that the discussion boards this semester have like developed inside jokes. So it's sort of just like keeping that community alive. Let's like acknowledge it and respect it and, you know, have some fun reviewing for the final or um, giving, um, uh, critiquing final projects among students or things like that. So there's, you know, it's, it's, about like those connections. Um, so these are kind of more class type activities. The feed, the feed forward um, ones, I think we're getting to, well, this is the only one we may have put in there. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and I, I'm sure you've all seen these ideas in the past too, but have some, some sort of wonder wall or wisdom wall um, for your students to leave messages to future students. I know some people use VoiceThread, any of those other audio things. You probably could do this on TikTok too. I don't know. Um, <laughs> just whatever. Rachel's on obsessed TikTok. with TikTok. <laughs> just, no, I'm not going to get on TikTok. The teens will like. Oh, you'll be massacred. <laughs> um, so anyway, so, but this is on Padlet. Um, we're going to do one for Teaching Tree on a Jamboard at the end. Um, because I only have the free Padlet account. Um, but, but things like, how are you feeling at the start of class? What do you wish you knew at the start of class? This can get to those things that Kelly, Kelly Katie was talking about with the teaching tips um, or study tips. What would be helpful? Um, what would be, what piece of advice would you give to them? And they don't have to answer all of these. Um, and I started doing this last year, but I didn't post the link in a good, I don't know where I posted it, but I didn't get a lot of feedback. So this year it's going like in an announcement and it'll be on the front page. Um, I think I'd kind of buried it a little bit last year, but um, just that idea, we know that students, I'm told students like advice from their peers more than us or to listen to it more. So if they're getting, if they're seeing like notes, voice threads, videos that students have left, that's like, hey, don't uh, study the last minute because these 
uh, concepts are really, you know, in depth there are the essay questions need a lot of thought. I don't know what they would say. Um, mine are always like the couple that were left is like the software always breaks. <laughs> so, so it's just, you know, leave yourself time for the software um, melting down um, <laughs> or learn how to Google the answer, not Google the answers, but like Google uh, error codes and things like that. So if it was better last semester, it would have been shared in the orientation model, sort of like this is what students have said in the past, just as a, you know, FYI. So, so this, you're right. It's sort of that you have, there's two parts to it. It's like record it. And then it's feedback for students and feedback for whatever feed forward for you too, of things that you need to communicate better. I think. I like, like the, ele the element of that that I like is that there's some sort of like, it almost like, bridges the communities of this semester with next semester like like donna said every semester is going to have its own challenges next semester will have a different set of challenges and that they'll never be the same but it's almost like giving a little glimpse at next semester students that she's look at the look at the challenges that those students dealt with and like if they can do it we can do it i don't know there's some sort of sense of community building across sections which feels mm -hmm. very um i don't know there's something really nice about that feeling. So yeah, I'll, I'll be quiet now. That's all right. I think no, just, I you know, it tags on to the empathy of, you know, video and or closure ending, of course, I always do like a farewell after I get all the grading done just to kind of mm -hmm. another closure. But you know, I'm not just rattling off dead times or dead times, deadlines or <laughs> next, <laughs> next steps or things like that. I always start this video just like saying how proud I am of them. I know that um, one thing I've learned as an adult or, you know, at Mesa is that not everyone has like support system constantly telling them they're proud of them. So it's sort of nice to be mm -hmm. like, and, and also this video, I loved this clip. Cause I also look exhausted in this video and just like <laughs> mentally and physically worn out as I'm trying to be positive and be proud of them. But, but I'm also like, it says we did it. We made it through the semester and I am just, you know, exhausted. In it. And I think, but it's like, I didn't, I wanted to take that time to be like, just to remind them to have that empathy. And I, and I talk in there, like, you know, we've had, we've talked in discussions about, you know, X, Y, and Z, and, you know, some of your working full time and caring and sick. And just, I'm just so proud of you because it's hard to get through any class. It's very hard to get through a technical class. So just, you know, just those little, those little things about empathy, like Donna was saying, give them that soft landing. And also just like, know that in this time and in precedented times, it's, it's, you know, it's always nice to just acknowledge that our students are working um, very hard. Um, there's one other, I do this, uh, sometimes I'll give them next, like specific next steps. I think that helps sometimes with closure too. It's like, okay, now, like, what do I do? Like, oh, uh, if this is one of my later classes, like, are you ready to take, do you know what you need to do to get signed into a work experience class? Do you, um, have you, you know, what's going, when am I going to get my grades or what courses are offered? What courses are offered next semester? It's like, let me tell you. And then this was, um, in the fall. So I wrote back, I wrote, I wrote, you know, check the spring schedule. If you feel like you need a break, that's fine. But also spring doesn't start to February. So maybe you'll feel differently. <laughs> um, maybe you'll feel differently at the end of January, you know, and I should have said, but you can register up into the ad deadline, you know, so just things that I believe things that you I know, believe you can, do and that like stay safe i can't wait to see you in the spring because like donna said I, i'm sure we've all had this like students just having crises this this year and it's just like i'm looking forward to seeing you i want to see you back i value you being here and whether it's this year or any year i think that's pretty salient um, one, of, one of the things in my announcements that i say to them is um, i try to give them someone to come to following up on that is I may not be your teacher now, but I will be your teacher for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. So you have my email. If you have a question, you need to ask, a, I'm here. Let me know. I'm never going to stop. Like you never stop being a parent. I'm never going to stop being your teacher. It's not just one and done. So you may not take any more of my classes, but please come to me if you can't get an answer somewhere and I will help you find that answer. So don't think of this as, oh, she's done with me forever, um, especially for the students that are going on in the major. But I also try to say that to the students in the GE because they're still trying to find themselves. They don't know what they want to be when they grow up, most of them. So I say, you know, if you just need to chat, 
come on over. If you don't know who to talk to on campus, let me know. If I don't know it, I'll find you the information. So you, I like to, I want to try and build that with them so they always have some when they go, okay, I know I can email her. Now I warn them, it's summer. It may take me a minute mm -hmm. <laughs> to email you back, but I will get to you. I promise. Um, but please don't feel like you have to float around by yourself. You know, glom on to me for a minute and then I'll, you know, we'll figure out where you need to go. And I don't have this in this announcement, but it goes on what Donna said. Uh, tell them to find me on LinkedIn, especially with my students entering careers. It's like, I'd like to see you progress and I like to see you get promoted. So find me on LinkedIn. It's a great way to stay in touch, especially if you have questions or if I need a guest speaker, I can, I can find you that way, <laughs> which I just did. Um, this is sort of, there's also, uh, you know, this is going to dovetail nicely with the email Cara sent out um, this week, um, which I have, I think on the next slide, but Cara sends that great email at the end of every semester that says like, hey, have you done, I'll just skip forward. Hey, have you done all of these things? Have you checked when your course ends? Have you caught, you know, this is how you copy grades, all those great things, uh, Cara reminds us. Oh, and that was I, a great email, Cara. So that well was like Cara. This, such a good email. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's those things that it's like her email may get, I don't know why Cara's emails ever get lost, but we get a lot of emails and it's just that reminder, like, have I set, have I adjusted the course end date? Because I forget that, you know, a lot to, to adjust that. I do want students to be able to hand things in after. I don't want it to disappear from their, their dashboard right away. You know, Cara's got a video on how to do all this. Um, um, and it goes to with car gives that to do list. I try to give them a to do list too. Um, when to expect the grades, how to contact me, like Donna mm -hmm. was saying, all that good stuff. Um, you know, and then in the you so you can model that excellent behavior that car is showing us by sending that email that or, or that announcement that she suggested reminding them how their grades will be determined. Uh, I remind them to check to see if they're missing any assignments. I remind them how to set up an office hours appointment. Cause if they realizing the last week of class, they need to talk to me and they've never hit that schedule a meeting button before they may totally forget it's there. So, and that can be done week 15. You could set it up to be done, uh, send out on Monday to this week, if you wanted to, um, uh, sorry, Donna, do you have anything else you wanted to add to sort of the, the announcement housekeeping type things? Yeah. I find, um, for my students that, um, I try to schedule the end of the semester so there's not a ton of stuff. You know, they have the last two weeks is a presentation and then it's the final, that's it. I try, especially for the 16 weeks, the eight weeks work a little different. Um, and I, try, I start warning them like week 13. Okay, this is coming, here's the Titanic, it's coming along. <laughs> Let's turn you, it. Got, you guys, you got it. Oh, you got to get this. There's a cat. <laughs> there's a, a literal Titanic. Is <laughs> Came through. Um, so I try to start setting them up ahead of time. You know, be aware that this is the deadline. This one's going to be a hard deadline. This is a hard deadline. Be prepared for it. Every announcement. This is going to be a hard deadline because I got to get it graded so you can carry it on to summer school or you need it to transfer. So there's I want to have your grades in by this date. So this is why I'm taking it. Uh, this is the latest I'm taking it. So I try to start warning them way in advance. Um, it works sometimes and it works others, but um, I, I just try to start warning them. It's like the drop deadline. You start, you know, you start weeks out. Don't forget, don't forget, don't forget. So um, I don't I generally do office hours in finals week. I will think about that but because nobody comes and it's just me and the cats I mean what more could you want I know. <laughs> but I like I like what George is saying in the chat too and it's it's mm -hmm. definitely I think something we're all kind of getting to is uh you know like you were saying invite departing students to add me to their teams of support mm -hmm. um and and I think what Don and I are stressing is and all of you are stressing in the chat is it your students may not know that's an option so saying it a lot is always good even if you feel like you're being repetitive and like this is happening you know drop deadline drop deadline drop deadline or like find me on linkedin this is my email what class do you take you know mm -hmm. do you have questions about classes it's good you know i'm here if you have questions this is you know like donna was saying i'm your i'm still your teacher it's making sure that they know that what kind of support they can have from you in the future and it's there and available to you 
Um, the, uh, I think, yeah, so this is from Kelly and Espen's presentation, but I put it in because I'm incorporating it, but uh, the post-semester evaluation just uh, copied Ke Kelly's version. I think someone's ver one of these versions or Espen's version. Um, you know, it's feedback is good. It's good to get feed. We always talk feedback. It's good to get at all points of semester, especially good at the end of semester to kind of um, get that last bit of knowledge from your students that you can import to them next year. And I believe Kelly's is also a lot about um, like how the instructor sounds like silly, but how the instructor made you feel. So if you think you're doing these things like like Donna and Georgia and other folks are putting in the chat, like I'm being really open and I'm available to them, like make sure that message is getting through, like make sure your students have felt heard. And if they're like, some, you may get, be surprised that maybe it's not as being as heard as you would like. So you just up the, up the ante next semester and it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's a great way to learn and improve. Um, so I put those links back in there for you. Um, but like Kelly said, or like, like, sorry, like I'm reading, like Donna said, you know, it's also, I respect that it's the end of the semester and it's my students are burnt out, but, and going through all sorts of things, but these are sort of ways to get some more feedback if they're low stakes mm -hmm. feedback. Mm -hmm. And this is an, I'm pretty sure it's anonymous. Um, and it's, as we all know, a little bit better than the evaluation form they get for our reviews. Donna, did you want to add anything? <laughs> No, I'm sorry. I wish I could sit here and go, oh, yeah, I have this great survey I do at the every semester. And every semester I say I'm going to do it. And every semester I don't. Well, but that's that's the benefit of the teaching trees. I went to that yep. feedback <laughs> one. I created one. I just have it in one, one class. Days. I just have it in one class so far, you know, just yeah. baby steps. <laughs> and it's, you know, I'm really looking forward to putting it in everywhere else. But it's like through teaching tree, you know, that was yep. a lot. I've done so much more with feedback this semester. Mm -hmm. So looking forward to wrapping it up and I'm going to be better about more thoughtful about where I place these feedbacks. So, yeah. or feedback yeah. points. So I actually get the good feedback. Yes. Including your information and course activities mm -hmm. during the final week. So that's a great idea of um, updating, you know, like you're saying, Georgia. Uh, so, so our little seedling activities. Now I do think the jam board, so again, no padlet will be super fun, but, and also useful for Katie, maybe. Um, but you could, you know, check your end dates if you want to start putting together your week 16 announcement or you want to do a farewell video or you just want to chat about uh, I didn't Don and I neglected to pause to ask you some the the, the audience. Questions. <laughs> yeah. So, but, the, you know, any questions or just like what else do you do? I mean, we've been putting things in chat, but I'd love to hear the other things. I learned so much from you all.